here we go another edition of the overflow as we are we are learning man we are struggling fighting scratching clawing learning how to run god's race when we let him go first when we let him go first in our lives in all things in the name of jesus and we are we are applying ourselves and really struggling with and straining toward what does it look like to win every single day of our lives we want to win man woke up today you woke up today you want to get a win today what does that look like to win in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit how do we do that when god our father goes first knowing that god god our father doesn't lose god our father doesn't lose and if he doesn't lose and i'm surrendered to him then guess what he's going to get his win through me what does that look like when we run god's race in the overflow of the father the son and the holy spirit their love for us when they accomplish their faithful will through in us and through us for the glory of our Father's name. Last time together we looked at James 1. And James 1, that, that gnarly passage. Uh, James 1, uh, verse 3, Consider it all joy whenever you face trials of many kinds, knowing that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. It accomplishes its perfect work uh, so that you are complete, not lacking in anything. The joy of the Lord, that finding joy in our trials. Man, we are to find joy in our trials. We unpack that quite a bit. Uh, and this week we want to look at what about emotions in the, in the middle of our trials? One of the mistakes that we can make, man, we want to get the win. One of the mistakes that we can make in the kingdom of God as we're walking after the will of our Father is to completely discount the emotions we can discount and minimize and blow off and ignore uh, to our uh, neglect, to our demise, and certainly to the pain of the people around us, the emotional reality of our lives. We can rationalize and say, well, hey, man, if I'm following God, this is what God must want to happen. Uh, and we can just absolutely distort what an emotional reality looks like. Let's keep in mind that the Holy Spirit of the living God lives inside of us. The Spirit of God wants to birth emotional health in us, wants to birth what, what we call emotional appropriateness. What even does emotional health look like? We define emotional health as feeling emotionally appropriate according to our circumstances. 40, feeling emotionally appropriate according to our circumstances. So if you're going through a hard time, you should feel the challenge of going through a hard time. If you're losing a loved one, you should feel the grief and the loss of, of losing a loved one. In the same way, if you're feeling, if you're having some great breakthrough, you should feel the joy of the Lord and having having that that breakthrough. What is that? What is it? What, what are the circumstances warrant? And the Spirit of God is working, right? So if you think about uh, the life of Jesus. Uh, Matthew 10, Luke 10, when, when the disciples came back, he sent out the 70 and he gave them anointing to preach the gospel and heal the sick and to cast out demons. And when they came back and reported to him all the great stuff that was being done through them, the scripture says that Jesus felt joy in the Holy Spirit. He felt joy in the Holy Spirit because of their success. Then you fast forward Matthew 26, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and the scripture says that he was anguishing to the point of sweating drops of blood. He felt joy because circumstances were joyful. He felt distress because circumstances merited that kind of emotional reaction. But in both circumstances, he was being faithful to the will of God our Father. So let's not get into this holier than thou, emotionally clinical, emotionally neutered, uh, a belief system where, oh, if I'm walking in the will of God, it's robotic and I'm not going to feel anything. That's just categorically not true. Emotions are something given to us by our Father for us to enjoy, to be warning systems for us when stress and anxiety is a warning system that we're outside of the favor or outside of, of what God our Father is leading us to do. Um, um, the hurt that we're supposed to feel because loved ones are hurting. Emotions are our flavor of life. Otherwise, we're just eating bland food. Hey, at least we're getting nutrients, but there's no taste. There's no flavor. Uh, emotions are the taste and the flavor, the taste and the flavor of life. And so what position do emotions have in our lives as followers of Jesus? I want to look at Psalm 116, verses 1 to 4. Psalm 116, verses 1 to 4. Uh, if you if you cross reference this this uh, podcast or this YouTube video with the blog post this week, you're going to see a little bit of difference. The blog post is an excerpt from uh, Big Deep Breath Devotional. It's really good. I encourage you to go uh, read that. It'll be a lot cleaner and tighter than than what this podcast is. But you're going to get some stuff. Of the podcast not on the blog anyway. You can go you can go check it out. Psalm 116 
most likely not written by David, but written by some of the other men that authored some of the Psalms. So this is a man writing about his emotional life uh, and encounter something he's experiencing in his life. I want you to hear the emotional fullness, the dark place that he goes to emotionally. But then what does he do with that? How does he process that when he's hit with an emotional storm because of the chaos of life and the unpredictability of life? Uh, how does he process that? How does he, what are some of the steps that he deals with in his life? Watch this, Psalm 116, verse one to four, Psalmist writes, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. That's an emotion, man. I love, I feel affection. I feel fire. I feel passion for the Lord. I love the Lord. Why? Because he hears my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I shall call upon him as long as I live. So he's describing this robust dynamic relationship where he believes that God our Father hears, he believes that God listens. He feels heard. Isn't that powerful to feel heard? When's the last time you felt heard by somebody in your life? He feels heard by God our Father. It opens up his relationship with the Lord that he can share powerfully all of these emotional experiences that he's having. He says, I love the Lord. And then listen to, to what he says in verse 3. Listen to how he describes his emotional reality in verse 3. The cords of death encompassed me, and the terrors of Sheol came upon me. I found distress and sorrow. You ever felt like that? When's the last time you've felt like that? You know, it's one thing to have an acute experience. It's one thing to be trucking through life, and, and a bad thing just happens. Uh, you, you know, you're, you're, uh, you get in an accident, and your car gets totaled. Uh, your 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 boss comes to you and says the work you did on a project was was terrible. Um, you know your life is going pretty good, and, and then you get these these spikes and, and bad stuff, and then those can be bad, oftentimes fairly quickly resolved. But what about those problems that come upon you that are not easy, so easily resolved that you can't just sit down in two or three hours and fix uh, that take weeks and months and are unending? What about those? And then what about the category of problems that go even beyond those that, that fall into the category of chronic issues? Chronic issues that are perpetual. This is a very, very minor example, but I've got chronic back pain. I've had it for 25 years. My, my left leg goes dead. I've gotten all the MRIs and the x-rays. I know what the problem is. I could go get back surgery if I wanted to, but I don't get into back surgery unless you want to have a lifetime of back surgery. And so I tolerate it. I deal with it. I've got things I can take care of, things I exercise I can do. And that's a minor chronic problem in the category of chronic problems. There are far, far more severe and debilitating chronic issues. And the emotional reality of chronic issues is just a completely different reality then, you know, my life is doing pretty good and I get, you know, my car got totaled. It's not to say that getting your car totaled is not a bad deal. It's a bad deal. But compared to chronic pain, uh, chronic pain is just a different category. you got to expect that there's going to be waves of uh, emotion just all over the place. And that's why James writes, consider it all joy when you, can sit, when you encounter trials of various kinds various kinds all of these all of these different kinds and so we're not told in Psalm 116 if this author is experiencing something chronic but we are given an indication that he is dealing with something severe severe enough that as he takes an inventory of his internal weather as he takes an inventory of his internal weather he describes it as feeling like the cords of death are encompassing him. The terrors of Sheol are coming upon him, and he is finding distress and sorrow. That, that's profound darkness. Uh, and, and again, this is a man, for all intents and purposes, is being faithful to the Lord. Remember, he opens his psalm with a declaration of his love for the Lord and that he knows from the trajectory of his life that when he shares, when he opens up to the Lord, the Lord hears him. He feels heard. He's felt heard by the Lord in his life. Nevertheless, 
even in this wonderfully healthy relationship with the Lord that he's got, whatever the unpredictable, chaotic nature of his life is, in this particular season, he's describing it as the cords of death, the terrors of Sheol, and finding distress and sorrow. That's bleak. That is dark. If you have never felt that, or if it's been a while since you felt that, or if you're in the middle of it right now, man, that is just, um, that is a deep valley. That is a deep, that is a deep valley. And listen to what he says, though. Listen to how he handles this. Listen to how he handles this emotional reality. Verse 4. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech you, save my life. Then he called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech you, save my life. This is one of the great joys, one of the great uh, benefits that you and I have as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ who've been set apart to run God's race who have been baptized into the family of our father we've been made sons and daughters of God most high we can call on someone who's greater than our circumstances you and I have the ability in the name of Jesus to call upon the King of Kings and Lord of Lords you and I have the ability to call upon Yahweh the pro covenant keeping promise keeping father of all creation and we can come to him and dump our emotional reality. We can come to him and pour out our emotional reality upon him. And we can say to him, oh, Lord, oh, my father, I beseech you, save my life. Clearly, this whatever this man is experiencing is making him feel like he's on the precipice of death, on the precipice of wanting to give up, on the, on the precipice of wanting to cash it all in. Blessed in his life that he knows that he has one that he can call on. Not only does he know that he has one that he can call on, he actually does. And in that calling upon our Father, he feels he feels heard. He feels heard. Let me ask you some questions. How emotionally honest are you about yourself? How emotionally honest are you about how you feel? How aware are you regardless of, of how you feel about your feelings? How in tune are you? What kind of emotional sensitivity do you have to yourself? There's really a spectrum in uh, emotional health, go figure. Uh, or I uh, better say it this way. There is a spectrum in the way in which we can handle our emotions. On the one hand, we can be emotionally anorexic. And to be emotionally anorexic is to completely shut down emotionally. I just ignore my emotions. I don't know anything about that. I just reject all of that. The other side of it is emotional bulimia where I am just run amok. I'm just constantly in my emotions all over the place. Healthy emotionalism is right in the middle. Healthy emotionalism is right in the middle. Healthy, um, being, uh, being emotionally healthy, for those of us who follow Jesus, being emotionally healthy is a product of and work of the Holy Spirit. I don't bear the pressure of bringing myself from being an emotional wackadoodle to being emotionally healthy. I, I don't have that responsibility for myself. I have a responsibility to relax back into the person work of the Holy Spirit and allow him to bring me and co-labor with him in becoming an emotionally healthy person. What the psalmist describes in Psalm 116 is wonderfully, beautifully, emotionally healthy. Emotionally healthy in the sense he's got a great relationship with his father. There's no topic, it appears, there's no topic in the psalmist's life that is off limits from sharing with his father. None. Even to the point of him feeling like he's on the precipice of death. Now, watch this. This means that as a man, as a tough, bad dude, he is in a situation that is beyond his ability to deal with. He's falling apart. And he doesn't look at that and say, I'm a man, I need to get my hands on this and I need to get a hold of my emotional reality. I, I, can, I got broad shoulders, I can handle it. He doesn't say that. He says, Father, I can't do this on my own. Emotionally, I can't do this on my own. That, that's it is so emotionally honest. It's so emotionally honest, it's beautiful. And then, and, then, and then the next part of the beauty of that is he's got such a healthy relationship with our Father that he can call out to our father and and declare his need prostrate himself and declare quite vulnerably his need to our father so one question is how in tune are you with your emotions second how honest are you with your emotions and the third question is this what kind of honesty emotional honesty do you have with our heavenly father what kind of emotional honesty do you have with our Heavenly Father? I don't think you can survive emotionally 
without having a dynamic, healthy relationship, growing and cultivating a dynamic and healthy relationship with our Heavenly Father. And let me frame it in this way. For those of you who are parents, you'll get this. And for those of you who uh, uh, want to be parents, you'll, you will soon get this. And, and for those of you who are kids, you'll get this. Uh, uh, for, for those of us who are parents, um, what, what topic is off limits? What topic are your kids not allowed to come and talk to you about? What topic are your kids not allowed to come to you and talk to you about? Now, I know as a parent, there's none. You, you want your kids to be able to come and talk to you about any topic on, on planet Earth, including their emotions. In fact, you would love for your kids to be able to come and tell you, even your grown kids. I got an 18-year-old. I got a 16-year-old. I would love for my kids to be able to come sit down and share with me, Dad, I'm really struggling with this. I'm, I'm not feeling good about this. I feel pain about this. I feel joy about this. There is no topic on planet Earth that is off the table when it comes to us and our kiddos. It should be the exact same way. If, I'm, if I've got hesitation in coming before our father with topics in my life, why would I expect my kids to be able to come and talk to me about anything that's going on in their lives? It, it, just doesn't, it just doesn't work that way. And so wherever you are emotionally, I think my greatest exhortation to you would be as we consider what does it look like to run God's race. Emotions are a vibrant part of running God's race. If you don't open up emotionally, if you don't allow our Father to open you up emotionally, either from anorexia to health or from bulimia to health, wherever you are, and allowing the Holy Spirit to bring you to emotional healthiness, you're going to have an extremely difficult time running the race that God our Father has marked out for you. You're going to have an even far more difficult time to get emotionally healed and to experience the fullness of uh, vitality in the Father, Son, and Vitality is an emotional reality. Vitality, you know, I feel great. That's, a, that's an emotional statement. And so my, my biggest exhortation to you would be, and is this, is to admit your emotional condition or your attitude toward your emotional condition to our Father. Confess it. Father, I struggle with emotions. Father, I struggle with talking to you about emotions. Father, it feels weird talking to you about my emotions. Confess it. Second exhortation would be this. If you don't feel heard by our Father, confess it. Father, I struggle sharing with you things because I feel like I'm sharing things and it comes up and it, and it stops here. and it does, or, or you listen to all these other people, but you don't listen to me. God, our Father wants you to know that you're heard. You, you are his son. You are his daughter. He wants you to know that you're heard. Uh, confess your emotional struggle to our Father. Confess your, your lack of feeling heard. And if you feel heard, but you struggle with your emotions, confess that. Uh, 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 and then don't forget. Don't, don't forget. Run. Run emotionally to your father. Run. Don't wait. Run emotionally. Snot cry. Celebrate. Not only in the dark stuff. Not only in this, in this the cords of death encompass me, the tears of shield are come upon me. But also celebrate the great stuff with your father. High five, man. Thank you. This is a great breakthrough. Thank you for the bit of wisdom. I'm, I'm blessed with, with uh, what I was able to participate in in my company. I'm blessed with, with this conversation I have with my wife or with my husband. I'm blessed with this financial thing that you did. Father, I'm celebrating this, man. Thank you so much in the name of Jesus. Bring the good and the bad, emotionally, the junk and the sorrow. And, and watch, watch how God will bring stability, stability to your soul. Hope this has been helpful to you as we are seeking. We're really trying to, to scratch this out. We want to win, man. We, I don't want to lose. I don't lose. I don't want to win. I don't want to run God's race in such a way that I win. At the end of the day, I want to win. At the end of the week, the month, the year, the life, I want to win. Uh, and, and there's absolutely a way that we can do it. If this has been helpful to you, if you'd share this on your social media channels, it would be great. Help us get the word out. Help us bring as many people as we can to run God's race together in the name of Jesus. It's been helpful to you, and you can help us out financially, trexo.org backslash donate. We need all the help we can get financially to keep this thing running. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, we've got other resources, trexo.org. Otherwise, I will see you again next time as together, together, we learn what it's like to run God's race in the overflow.